So next, I would request Yashwant to bring up the Indian viewpoint. Yashwant, over to you. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. You yes, are, and uh, and uh, you can see the my screen. Yes. Okay. So first, thanks to uh, Snail and Vivek for uh, giving the introduction from uh, the perspective of the SK office. Though for a moment when we started with Uber and uh, this thing, I thought you're going to give us a solution where SK Observatory can do cutting edge uh, astrophysics without owning any radio telescopes. Uh, but uh, that is uh, not to be. And so we have to build it. And that building requires industry interactions. And I'm going to present this from the point of view of the issues that we see uh, in India, uh, working with the partners and how uh, we need to move forward. So uh, this is just a reproduction from my uh, presentation yesterday, where uh, it just outlines the areas where India is going to participate. And again, for some of you who were not there yesterday, uh, this uh, the main areas uh, that uh, have been provisionally allocated uh, to India are the leadership role as the tier one lead country for building what is called the observatory monitor and control system, which is an expanded version of the telescope manager, uh, which we are well poised to do uh, working with industry partners because we have and uh, other members from the SK India consortium, because this is something that we have been involved in over the last several years uh, in uh, during the design phase and the prototyping phase as and also we are now included in the SK low construction team as a, a country that will be the second largest contributor after the lead country, Italy, to providing the SK low digital signal processing hardware, uh, where again, uh, there is a good amount of interest and expertise uh, in RRI as well as in NCRA and other members of SKIC we hope will be contributing. And But finally, the actual production and the work will be done uh, in industry. And we are also part of this uh, mid-construction effort in terms of uh, uh, providing one of the uh, one frequency band one feed uh, system, where again, uh, the, the final uh, development will happen uh, with industry partners and a smaller contribution in the STP uh, pulsar search processing uh, team, where it may be manageable with the contributions from the research institutes uh, of SKIC. Uh, and we may not be going to industry, but that remains to be seen. And so this overall adds to about uh, 6 to 7% uh, contribution towards the construction cost of the SKA. And that's a significant amount, and a good fraction of this work will be executed by industry. Uh, in addition, um, and I'll describe that in a minute as to what are the open contracts. There are certain open contracts which the SKO will put out as part of their um, procurement process. Uh, which uh, will be open to any member country uh, institutions or industry, and it should be possible for Indian industry to bid for some of these contracts. In addition to this, as uh, has been discussed, that uh, there are significant plans for in-country activities, which are not direct contributions to the SKA uh, construction activity, uh, prominent among, amongst which are the SKA regional data center in India, uh, which uh, will be something that we will build uh, and run in the country, which again is a significant uh, investment and again would be requiring expertise from industry to uh, to realize it. Uh, so with that, uh, we can uh, then uh, just uh, look a little bit complementary to what uh, Vivek uh, mentioned about the methods of contribution. So, you know, Vivek showed those four quadrants uh, in the way in which contributions or uh, procurements would happen to the SKA. Uh, so uh, one is, of course, that you make a cash contribution and a country provides cash and SKO uses it to support a centralized procurement process. Uh, and an in-kind contribution where a country provides to the SKO the specific product or service that is made in-house for an agreed upon cost value. And uh, the way the project is set up uh, for any country, uh, up to a minimum of 30% of the total contribution to the SK cost of construction needs to be a cash contribution, uh, whereas the balance 70% uh, can be either cash or in kind. And uh, based on the preferences that the government of India uh, uh, would like to have uh, for most uh, participation in such projects, 
uh, we will be likely having almost the entire balance 70 percent as in-kind contribution that is there will be items which are allocated to india which will be built and supplied uh, to the sko and uh, as i said bulk of this uh, will be resourced from indian industry now in this uh, 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 addition to this, there are support services and operations of the SKA for which all countries are expected to provide their contribution in cash. And again, some of these would result in uh, tenders uh, that would be open to uh, all participating countries, um, if not outside also. Uh, in all this is this concept which Vivek referred to briefly, the uh, assured work return. So what is uh, assured is that if a country puts in uh, a quantity a 100 uh, amount into the project you're supposed to get a uh, work return of 70 uh, in terms of investments that happen in the country that is work orders placed on entities in the country and these work orders uh, could include the in-kind contribution or they could include the contributions coming from the cash uh, uh, process cash procurement process that the observatory runs so um, what this means, of course, is that uh, uh, once every country's 70% requirement is met, the balance 30% of the construction expenses that the SKO will be incurring uh, will uh, are not uh, tied to returns to any specific country. And so those would be the open uh, tenders, which would be uh, available for participation by uh, industry or institutions from uh, in any member country, uh, if not from the entire world. And so again, uh, these would be over and above what we will be contributing as in-kind contribution, the, the items that I mentioned in the previous slide, and, and these would be open for Indian industry to, to contribute to. Uh, and, and so the, uh, as far as the SK is concerned, what they would be following for the uh, procurement process is uh, uh, the uh, for the case when they are doing a direct procurement of the product or service using the cash procurement uh, uh, route uh, they would have a contract with the company or the agency uh, uh, from the limited tender for procurement in specific country uh, so that would be to meet the work return uh, in the case where it is an open one which does not uh, which is not catering to any particular country's work return it would end up being a contract with the company or agency from the open tender for procurement of this uh, uh, items. And then there is the indirect procurement from an in-kind provider where there will be a contract with the providing country or relevant agency in the country who's providing uh, the in-kind uh, product or service. And the uh, finally, when you provide something, uh, there is a value that is attached to it. So if you're just providing cash, uh, that would be the value of the contribution, uh, which would be uh, 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 what you are giving to the project. And if you want to know how much return I got, that would be on the basis of the cost book value of the uh, item for which the order was placed on a, uh, an uh, industry or entity in your country. So uh, that is the formula, uh, except for some cases uh, when uh, we are providing uh, certain services in kind. And this is something Vivek also alluded to. There would be some agreed upon rates uh, with the provider uh, for the value of that um, uh, of that uh, service that is being uh, uh, supplied to the SK observatory and the credit that the country gets uh, would be uh, as per that agreement and as has already been mentioned all the contracts will follow the NEC4 contract structure with slightly different versions of NEC4 contracts for the different modes of procurement and you saw just one example which was this uh, PSSC uh, version of the NEC4 contract for uh, the software contracts which run in these short uh, uh, three-month cycles uh, over the duration of the, the project. And so this is important for us to be able to study and get familiar uh, with this uh, the NEC4 contract structure um, because it is uh, a bit different in its approach as was highlighted by Vivek and uh, it's not quite the kind of contract structure we would use if we had a contract with uh, a company in India to provide something. So now coming to what would happen uh, looking inwards within the country that, uh, as I said, most or all of India's 70% contribution to the SK capital cost of construction will be in kind. And um, 
uh, when it is in kind, the relevant agency in India, for example, either the nodal institution or any other institution which is a member of the SK India Consortium, which is taking charge of delivering that, uh, may end up having a appropriate NEC4 style contract with the SKO. So SKO, any contract with the SKO would probably, uh, uh, not probably, is uh, uh, very much has to follow the NEC4 uh, format. And then, so it is a contract that uh, uh, this agency in India agrees that we will be uh, building uh, and delivering uh, this item to the SK observatory. And within India, that, that institution will then run a procurement process that is compliant with the Government of India requirements, uh, because now you are uh, sourcing something from uh, Indian industry to build and provide to the SKO. And this could have the following kind of steps that you carry out a market or industry survey for the proposed work and identify what uh, kind of companies are ready or available to do or uh, uh, capable of doing that kind of work and then do a request for information process uh, from uh, you know all uh, you know open process uh, um, uh, available to anybody in the country uh, and uh, look at the responses and carry out an initial qualification to select a set of qualified vendors or companies who are capable of uh, delivering that. And then carry out a limited tender process amongst the qualified vendors. So this is you know, one uh, uh, approach. Uh, you could think of a, a case where uh, you do directly an open tender uh, with the final requirements uh, without doing a pre-qualification process. But uh, these are things that uh, uh, would vary a little bit from uh, item to item. Uh, but this is one of the things that we think we may be following and then the SK office is uh, okay with this. Now, they would also prefer that we have an NEC4 style contract with our vendors for in-kind contribution. And this is something that needs a bit uh, more careful study to see whether uh, that format of contract would comply uh, with the Government of India procedures for procuring items or getting things done in India. And uh, if not, then uh, we would have to insist that we carry out the procurement process as per our rules and that we finally supply to the SKO something that we have agreed to in the NEC4 style contract with them. And uh, the, there is the other question that when you're doing an in-kind uh, in procurement process, uh, the what would be the role of the SKO observatory? Uh, because uh, you're uh, promising something to them via your contract with them, uh, but do they still have uh, oversight in how you're running the process uh, or are they just the final customer without worrying about how you run the process or would they like to be involved or at least be an observer when we carry out these different steps uh, for uh, engaging with industry for doing this so this is something that is again open to some amount of uh, discussion and debate uh, for example in the um, the software kind of services that we are talking about uh, they have expressed the wish that they would like to be uh, at least there as an uh, advisor or consultant as we carry out this process. Uh, and, and then so, you know, uh, this again, we would have to understand and see. I just want a couple of minutes. Yes. So uh, then the last part of this is uh, what would be the differences in the way we run our uh, procurement process for hardware and software areas of participation. And um, the contributions to hardware, uh, which, uh, uh, you know, are mostly of the kind like you build, test, verify, and deliver uh, the item to the SKO for them to uh, do final integration into the telescope. Uh, whereas uh, contributions to software are more like supplying the necessary human resources. So uh, you heard about the SAFE approach in the previous presentation. So there are uh, SAFE teams that would be assembled and that they would be part of the overall team that is what is called a SAFE train. Uh, which would then be executing, for example, the entire observatory management control software. And so, uh, and it would run in these uh, three month long sprint cycles that we uh, talked about. And this would be done in close coordination with the SKO. So this is something uh, where the way you go about it is, uh, as you can see, uh, different than what you would do in a hardware thing. There's probably more of a collaborative approach in the software and which is why uh, the NEC PSSC type of contract is preferred there. Uh, but all this needs to be worked out. And uh, so this would have implications on, on how we do our contracts with the companies from industry for doing the hardware uh, versus the software kind of uh, tasks. And this also has some impact on how the SKO judges 
the delivery. So the hardware thing is, well, you've uh, verified, tested, there's a set of clear test metrics that you meet and it's accepted. Um, the software, it's a bit different uh, and, uh, and uh, the, uh, the need to change, reorder, team compositions, those things uh, would happen. And also finally, how do you give credit for the amount of work done? That is where this question of fixing the rates for the, the different uh, kinds of uh, people who are working and contributing comes up. So these are some of the things that uh, are being discussed with the SQO and will get clarified in due course. And uh, 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 hopefully we'll have a clearer uh, way forward for these different kinds of contracts. And uh, the last part is of course, for anything that is done uh, for in-country activities, uh, for example, the regional data center, we will be following the regular um, contractual processes that we do for uh, the uh, things that we normally procure and uh, set up uh, in any of our individual research institutions. And that should be no different, except that that's a significant uh, volume of work uh, involved here over the 10 year period. So I think that's all I had. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we can then open it up for questions and discussion. Hello. Sorry, I was muted. Thank you, thank you Yashwant. Are there questions for Yashwant at this point of time? Okay. There is a question from Aditya Dange. When awarding contract to industry, Will it be the contract between SKO and company or between SK India and CRS stroke RRI and company or a tripartite contract between SKO, SK India and company? No, so as I said, it depends on the kind of uh, procurement. As I said, there are two kinds. The uh, You can contribute something to the SKO either as uh, by giving uh, cash and letting them run the procurement process. Uh, or you can uh, um, uh, agree to uh, deliver it in in kind, which means that uh, you run the procurement process in your country and build that item uh, or, um, or that service and provide it to the SKO as a final product. So if you do the former, then the contract will be between the SKO and the uh, company or the entity who's uh, providing that item. Um, and the only thing that the uh, country has of interest is that that 70% work return should come uh, to the country in terms of contract which are placed with the companies in the country. And that is something that the SKO will manage that uh, balance. In the, in the second case, when it's an in-kind contribution, then there will be a contract between the SKO and uh, the entity in the country agency, um, uh, most likely one of the research organizations that is taking on the task. We have to see whether it can be with the, with the consortium and uh, to provide that in-kind service. And then there will be a regular contract with the industry uh, to uh, uh, build that uh, for SKIC. And, uh, and then SKIC will provide it to SKO as part of that contract. So there are not going to be any tripartite agreements. There will be uh, two um, agreements in this case. I mean, one is an agreement between SKO and the country. Second is a normal uh, uh, you know, commercial contract within the country with industry to deliver that item. I hope that clarifies that. I think so. I, th no, I think that was pretty clear. Is there any other question to Yashwan? I don't see any. So in view of the time, we'll move on and we'll come back to it in the general discussion at the end. 